Okay, good morning. We are here with Anna Karen. Uh, well, I was explaining her like all the kind of procedures that we do like uh, the last day. We do the tummy tuck and there was a lot of stretch marks. She has a long distance from the cephoides. There is a, a little bone that we have here to the belly. And from here to the pubis is a long distance. And also she has two hernias, one it was exactly above the belly and one under the belly. And we have to repair that to hernias. The, the muscles to be like repaired was the rectum, so there was a lot of diastasis. It was two separate the muscles and we put together, we repaired the hernias. And when we pulled down, it was because it was more distance from the belly down to the belly to higher. We have to leave a small scar in the center that it was the belly previously. And we create a new belly button on, on her. We do the liposuction, of course, on the sides, on the sides of the tummy, on the back, the low handles. We do a little fat grafting. It was not a lot of fat. And also we have to create and recreate the pocket because her implants, it was two on the side. When she was laid down, it was two on the sides. It was actually on her armpits. We need to close the pocket. We remove the implants. We change the implants that we have selling water. We we change from some other one that is that mon like the gel. There is a cohesive gel. And we create the pocket again. We reduce the pocket. And also we do a lifting. And well, I think she's been difficult the first two days because it's normal for my mommy makeover. <laughs> but I think she's going to be okay. Awesome, thank you so much. Three days before surgery, I am headed to the lab to start some of my pre-op testing, which includes a COVID test and some blood work. Um, not entirely sure what the blood work's gonna be, but I am definitely, I think I've been more nervous for the testing than the actual surgery because my biggest fear is that I'm gonna get there, get the test, and they're gonna be like, no bitch, you're too anemic to get this done, or no bitch, you need to go do this before we can have to do this and then have it rescheduled or something. So I'm definitely nervous. So they are requiring a negative PCR test as, you know, part of the testing. And I, I have to look at the paperwork they sent me. They sent me the lab work that they sent the lab anyway so i had to i did not for the last 12 hours meaning i haven't ate since 8 p.m last night because they told me i had to arrive on an empty stomach including fluid so no water no food for 12 hours and it's 8 a.m is the time that i'm going to show up for my testing and yeah so let's go besties Um, it's definitely getting real and I think I'm not nervous like yesterday Walter and I drove by the hospital and I was like oh look it actually made me kind of excited as I saw the hospital because it made it more tangible um, I don't think I'm gonna be nervous up until they're putting the IV in my arm to be honest um, I remember when I got my first breast augmentation in 2012 I was very like did give no fucks, did no research, just literally went in there, paid for some moves, and went back a few weeks later, and I got this shit done. And the one thing that I do recall from my first surgery is that when they were putting me under, I felt my body fighting to not go under, if that makes sense. Like when they put the IV in and the flu, I could feel the fluid going into my arm. I started like breathing heavily and kind of like panicking because I felt, I don't know, it's a hard feeling to describe, but I just, that's the one thing that sticks out from my previous surgery was fighting the, the anesthesia. And then, you know, I zonked out and I woke up and I had this. But that's the one thing that I've been nervous about is going under and that. The other part is also, um, I'm nervous about the kids. Like, I've explained to Axel that, you know, mommy's gonna go get surgery and this and that, and I'm gonna be gone in the hospital for a couple of days. And I'm anxious about not being able to take care of them, although I'm gonna have help with them. I'm really anxious to feel like inservible and like um, helpless, you know, when they need me at home or where they, when they want me or like wanna lay down with me or just shit like that. You know, I'm definitely anxious for the babies. 
is the biggest thing I'm honestly scared for right now. Like surgery aside. Oh, and also sleeping. I'm nervous. Like, how am I gonna sleep? <laughs> so anyway, um, to the lab we go. Buenos días. Este tenía unos análisis que envió mi doctor para hacer una prueba de COVID y unos análisis de sangre. ¿Se los va a realizar? ¿Perdón? ¿Se los va a realizar? Sí. La biomática, los tiempos de coagulación, la química sanguínea, el perfil de lípidos, el HIV, el hepatitis B o C. Los resultados de los análisis, aparte de la prueba de COVID, ¿cuándo estarían disponibles? Estos estarían hoy en la tarde a las 6. Ok. Estarían con comprados y Pasa de garganta de nariz. ¿eh? De garganta y nariz. Es la pesada que tiene. Uh -huh. La otra es nada más de nariz que la que va rápido. El antígeno. El antígeno. Según dicen que el PCR es más. Este, más seguro. Eh, como que. Sí, más seguro. Uh -huh. Okay, so quick recap, we just come, I just completed the blood work and the COVID test and they gave me uh, a list of the actual uh, tests that they were running and so let me read them off to you because I thought it was like, oh, that's interesting. Um, hold on, where to go? Um, request. So they did the PCR, uh, the COVID PCR test and then they did testing to test the following things. My red blood cell count my white blood cell count, my hemoglobin count, hermatocrit, uh, I'm not a medical professional so I may slaughter some of these names, MCV, oh, glucose, uh, cre creatine, creatine, something weird, um, my platelets, my lymphos, uh, a lot of, a lot of blood stuff, a lot of blood stuff, um, they tasted, they tested for HIV, hepatitis C, hepatitis B, and also, someone can it on a lipid profile which tests cholesterol some other weird name so a lot of blood work right a lot of blood count um shit like that 
yeah so <laughs> they took four tubes of blood and they swabbed my throat and my nose I get really queasy so I the video you guys can clearly see I wasn't struggling I was just taking deep breaths because I psych myself out whenever like I cannot see not necessarily blood but like I can't see myself be poked with a needle. Even when I get tattooed, I, I can't look. I always look away and I always pinch myself somewhere to like redirect the pain. So when you guys, when she was taking my blood, I was actually pinching my leg. Um, it didn't hurt. She was really good at, at like when she poked me, it didn't hurt at all. It only like stung a little bit when she was changing the tubes and it kind of moved a little bit. Um, but in general, I get really queasy with needles and getting poked and like flu shots and shit immediately know like I will get tattooed for eight hours straight, but getting an injection of any sort with a needle it makes me really queasy. So anyway, I can eat now. Um, the next testing will be on Thursday. That's two days from now. I will go meet with my doctor. I actually haven't met him face to face. So I'm really excited. Oh. So Thursday morning, I will go and get cardiology work. And then Thursday afternoon, I will meet with my doctor at 5 p.m. to get the pre-op instructions. And that will be my first time meeting him face to face. We've done a lot of Zoom calls. Um, we did uh, video conference consultations. So Thursday will be the first time that I meet him face to face. So after today, we have two more days and then <laughs> oh, it's right around the corner. Okay, it is less than 24 hours before surgery and <laughs> I am a little bit anxious. Um, anyway, but before we get into that, I am currently on my way to the cardiologist to uh, do more pre-op testing. I did receive my lab work from two days ago, and my COVID test came out negative. From what I could see, I mean, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know entirely what they're looking for on these tests. Um, the majority of my levels came out normal. However, I won't know until uh, tonight when I meet with the doctor if all my uh, lab work and my cardiology lab, whatever, if everything's good, right? I won't know until tonight at 5 p.m. whether the doctor gives me the green light that yes, we can proceed with surgery tomorrow morning. Nonetheless, I think I'm already kind of training myself to think that surgery is indeed <laughs> tomorrow morning. Um, honestly, the thing that's causing me the most anxiety right now is the fact that I'm not going to be able to take care of my kids. Above everything, that is what has me stressed the most. I can see myself definitely like hurting myself trying to get up sooner than I should be getting up to take care of my kids or to try to, you know, just do the mom thing. Um, so I'm gonna be spending two nights at the hospital is the plan I get. I'm gonna talk about it with the doctor tonight. The norm is just to spend one day, but because of the amount of procedures that I'm getting done, um, you know, and I know the fact that being around the kids is going to naturally make me want to get out of bed and, and do things I probably shouldn't be doing right off the bat, I'm considering spending two nights there. Um, but once I come home, I'm just, I'm getting really, really anxious about the kids, like above anything else, not even sleeping, not even the pain, not the drains. What's stressing me is the babies. And, um, you know, Walter is going to be taking care of them, but I'm very much a control freak. I've, I've come to realize and, um, being out of control is stressing me out when it comes to my kids and my home. You know, I run my house. Like, I hold my home together, right? So going into the surgery, knowing I'm gonna have to step back and let someone else do it, and me being pretty much useless, is fucking me. I began blogging my mommy makeover after my consult, and I need to give you guys some kind of background to this procedure, and, and actually what it symbolizes to me. And this mommy makeover, so I'm going to be getting a, a tummy tuck, lipo, a BBL and a breast augmentation redo because I currently have saline implants from 2012, right? So this surgery isn't entirely cosmetic for me and where it began was my need for a tummy tuck and you will see through the course of this video through my before pictures where you can clearly see that my abdomen muscles really have some medical need. I have two, I have an abdomin, abdominal hernia and an umbilical hernia. 
and they are a, a result of my pregnancies. I developed my hernia after my twin pregnancies because my babies were huge. Um, I had a six pound twin and a seven pound twin. And so it just left my shit really fucked up, right? So I always knew that I wanted a tummy tuck and I always said, I'm gonna wait to fix my hernia when I get my tummy tuck. And so, you know, the opportunity finally presented itself you know, this year when Walter came down and I had somebody available to help me take care of the babies because other than that, that was the one thing that's been holding me back. Really the only thing that's been holding me back for a long time. Um, I just didn't need to do it. So anyway, I scheduled the surgery and initially it was a consultation just for my tummy tuck, right? And when I was getting the consultation, I happened to mention it to him. Well, what would be the cost difference because my implants are 11 years old and they need to, I know that they need to be switched out. And I had some concerns with how they're sitting. Um, they kind of just go off to the side now whenever I lay down. And you know, they're just, they're just not A1 because I've had two babies since my implants and I've nursed those two babies with my implants. So they're just not as perky and they don't sit where they're supposed to be. And um, health-wise, it's time to switch out the saline implants. And so when I did my consultation, you know, the cost wasn't very much, it wasn't a, a large difference to me. And I said, you know, it's worth doing it. And so when we talked about my tummy tuck, he told me, you know, the game plan. And he said, I, I will, I do recommend doing lipo with your tummy tuck. Otherwise you will be left with kind of a, an uncontoured finish, you know? And again, it wasn't much of a difference to do the lipo, but then that spark, well, if we're in a lipo, <laughs> I don't have a lot of that to begin with, so we can't just waste it. Can you just redirect it and do my BBL? And he was like, well, actually, we can. He was like, my concern was, can we do that many things in one city, right? Because my thought process is, I just want to get everything out of the way. I don't want to go under again. I don't want to come back for a second procedure. You know, I have to take advantage of my older kids being in the States. And then the fact that their dad is around, or the little ones, their dad is around. And so I said, can we do everything at once? And he said to me, you know, if you were a heavier set patient where we were doing a large amount of lipo, I would not do everything at once because it was a, the lipo, I guess, is what's really painful and I don't fucking know. I guess it's really like shocking to your body. He's like, but because you're very thin and we won't be doing a lot of lipo, you can do everything in one sitting. And that was when everything just came. We went from a tummy tuck to an entire uh, mommy makeover. You know, they quoted me out. Um, I found it affordable. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of what it costs because everyone's quote will be different. Your body is going to have different needs than my body. And I know that's something that people frequently ask on social media, like, well, how much did it cost? How much did your cost? And I'm not entirely sure that I understand why people ask that because, um, again, everybody's, oh, fuck, I can everybody's uh, body is different and what I get done and how much it costs me is not going to be what it costs you. And in general, I think that's an intrusive question. Uh, finances in general shouldn't really be discussed and poked and prodded on social media for, for various reasons that I have learned through the course of my platform. So I will share the doctor, but I'm not going to share, you know, my finances, how much I'm paying, etc. But that gives you a little bit of a backstory. This morning, as I was getting ready and, you know, just to come do this um, pre-op testing, I got a little bit better, like a sad feeling like, oh my gosh, this is going to be the last morning that I see this belly because this belly is very significant to me. I know it might sound really silly, but for example, when I first got here and I was deported, I had the opportunity to get um, my tummy tuck, right? I didn't have any kids. I was by myself. I had the finances shortly. Well, not like right when I got deported, but you know, within the two years that I didn't have my children and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it because when I looked at my belly, I was like, this is what represents my motherhood. You know what I mean? And at the time, I didn't know if I would be able to get my children back and if I would see them again, none of that. So I was hanging on to the only thing left that I had of my kids, which was my stretch marks and the way that my belly looks. But you know, with times have changed since and you know, things have gotten back to normal. I have my babies back and I'm blessed that I will never have to worry again whether you know I can have my babies or not. So it is just really bittersweet to get this procedure done because my body is, yeah, I love my body. My body's been through so much. It's birthed five beautiful children. It's, you know, done a lot of crazy stuff on the pool. It's, it's a strong machine for me. So it's just really like, 
although I know that it needs to be done, some of these things need to be done. Yes, my hernias need to be fixed. My hernias were something that definitely were holding me back um, athletically. As you guys know, I practiced full fitness and there were a lot of things that I couldn't do because of my hernia. I was actually instructed by my doctors multiple times that I'm not supposed to be lifting anything heavy. I'm supposed to be like flakada, um, like have a bandage to hold it in. And I never do that. And my hernia has actually gotten worse through the years because before, and you guys will see videos of it, it used to only pop out every once in a while and I would just kind of have to push it back in. But now it's permanently out. And sometimes it even hurts when I do basic things like sneezing. Shit like that, you know? So anyway, it's a bittersweet feeling um, because <laughs> I'm like, this is the last time my body's about to change drastically overnight. and. I don't know guys, I just want to give you all that spell. So I just pulled up to the hospital, I gotta go, um, let's find some parking and get this done. Area, 
the shape is going to look better. Right. And also because we type the muscles in the tummy tuck, we are going to reduce your waist. And that also helps with the exam. And we are going to increase a little bit, well, a little bit or medium, but depending on the, the sizes that we use here. And that it will also like create the better shape and see where it's like more like a, a little detail, you know, because we don't have a lot of fat. When there is a lot, well, of course, we do the fat wrapping, but not, not like in your case, because in your case, it's not much for that. If um, I, when we did the original consult, you mentioned that if I had a lot of fat to the lipo, you, you wouldn't recommend doing every all the procedures in one. Uh huh. The three yes. Is it because lipo is uh, like the hardest? Why is that? Is lipo hard on the body? Well, the lipo, yes, because, not, because in your case, it's not a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some patients that they are very heavy. And if you remove a lot of fat, your body compensates a little bit more. And the fluids and everything, that's why the patients feel a little uh, more difficult to walk in and everything because also we lost more like blood during the surgery. Um, and that's why. But in your case, it's a small light bulb. That's why well, it's possible to do everything at like once. And sometimes when there is too much we say okay we can do only the tummy tuck sometimes we do only tummy tuck and light bulb but like in your case your body type and everything what is possible to do the light bulb the tummy tuck and the breast because it's not a lot from that mm -hmm. one thing i've been really anxious about is how will i sleep well you will sleep like face up like sitting sitting okay. yes so we have two three pillows in the back and maybe one pillow on your legs because the idea is to be like a little flex. But I've, I've heard you can't sit after the... When they do breast, like sorry, like there is a gluteal implants, you cannot be seen. But in the case that we do with the fat transfer, there is no problem. Oh, okay. Because we are going to do the breast as well. With the tummy tuck, you need to be like bending over. That's why you need to be in that position. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, for the, the the surgery, well, of course, like we talk to like for tomorrow. This is a free of instructions. Uh, you already have all the instructions. Uh, it's very important, like the one that is on red here. Uh, nothing after 10 p.m. 10 p.m. is the last time that you can drink or you can eat anything. After that is nothing. There is all the instructions here, how you need to come, comfortable clothes, like your hair recommendation, and everything, but this, all this is for today, all right? And how, I think you already have all in your email, <laughs> that is very important to yeah. you. Okay. Also, we have some uh, post-op indications that also you have in your email, but it's important to have this one again. This is all the instructions for post-op, okay, because it's so important to understand what's the activities that you can do, what is that, how I like to do it. It's very important to follow all the instructions about showering. We will have some tubes and drains, okay? This is one of the parts that we are going to explain to you after the surgery because you will have the tubes, okay? That tubes, uh, remember we talked, we are going to have one in each side of the breast. We will have one on the left side, one on the right side, one in the tummy, and one in the back. Okay, that's the two that we are going to have. Tomorrow, we are going to explain you a little bit more physical to understand how to take care of the tubes because we need to be keep tracking how much it is in the small container from the tubes to, to know when it's time to be removed. The first drains to be removed normally are the breast tubes, okay, or drains. That is normally after four to six days after the surgery. And when we know that it's a drain ready to be removed, in 24 hours, when it's less than 25 milliliters, in 24 hours for each drain, it's time to be removed. And that happens four to six days for the tube from the rest seven to 10 days, the tube that is going to be in the tummy, and 10 days to 15 days, the drain on the back. 
Okay, that's average, but sometimes it's before that. Okay. The incision scares, of course, is going to be like explained out after the surgery as well. Is basically to keep clean the wounds. We are going to use this antiseptic spray, and we are going to explain how to keep like cleaning your the wounds. And also, you will have a garment compression. Remember, we talked about having the garment compression, 24 hours, seven days, every week, and that it will happen for six to eight weeks after the surgery, day and night. We are going to use also a sports wrap and a band on the top, and that's the same. We're going to use all the time the bra and the band, and we only take out to get into the shower and return from that. Mm -hmm. Perfect uh -huh. uh, normally the, like the sports bra will be earlier, four to five weeks. Um, the, the best idea is when you are at home, you will, we will continue doing the consultations, like doing the follow-ups, we will send you some pictures through the coordinator, and then we will schedule a video conference. We will talk about that, and every week that we talk to you, we are going to okay. From now, you can start doing, moving a little bit on your arm, you can start doing this, when start the, the creams and the healing and things to improve the, the process from the scars. But that's why we need to be in contact with you for the next six months to one year. Because remember we talked about the final result about not too much swallowing and everything is four months to six months. But that complete healing about the scars, it takes one full year. Right? But everything is starting down here. When to call us and when to leave. Right? Okay. Part here. For the the day of the surgery that is going to be tomorrow, you have to arrive to the hospital very early morning. We need you to be six o'clock in the morning, and that it will be in the first floor to the emergency door. You will see like when you go downstairs. Yeah. Okay, well, that's the admission desk. You will be at 6 o'clock in the morning because it's very important to start the process to do the checking. You will require only a photo ID and you will present on the admission and you will start like, like doing all the checking for the process. What? Okay, so it's the night before surgery and I'm packing my hospital bag. So I have to be at the hospital at 6 a.m. I can't eat after 10 p.m. And I can't eat. Who are you calling? Oh, oh, anyway, sorry. Okay, so I have to be at the hospital at 6 a.m. I can't eat after 10 p.m. And I'm going to be spending a couple of nights there. So I'm just getting everything ready. I've cleaned up the house. I'm packing my bag. And I wanted to show you guys what I'm packing in my hospital bag. Here's my big bag of this mommy makeover shit that I have been purchasing online. So I'm just going to show you everything that I have. And then we'll figure out what needs to go in the hospital bag. So... The famous BBL pillow. Um, your butt hangs over here so you don't have to apply direct pressure. And it's highly recommended by a lot of um, TikTok accounts that I've been researching on. So the BBL pillow. This is the toilet pillow. So you put this on the toilet so that when you go pee, you sit down and your butt hangs over it without having to apply direct pressure to it. Um, uh, this is una tabla moldeadora. So it goes, I mean, at some point I'm gonna put on a regular faca and we'll go inside the faca to like mold my tummy for my tummy tuck. Um, socks, compression socks, and a couple of those in my bag. Arnica cream, shout out to Amber Heard. More Arnica cream. And then these are the little devices to help me <laughs> use the restroom. They were recommended on a TikTok that I saw, so TikTok made me buy it. Oh look, they come with a little baggie. And now I suppose that I won't need these at the hospital because I'm sure that they will have, you know, someone to assist me. Um, Arnica cream, some more. I have a little Arnica cream for all the bruising. Oh, and then this is a little bag, I believe, for my BBL pillow. So the hospital will supply me with, you know, one faca for my breast and my tummy, like one full body faca. 
but it's going to get soiled a lot because, you know, as I'm going to be draining more Arnica. I bought way too much Arnica. And then I bought like five different gowns because, you know, it's going to be hard to get dressed. And they said that whatever I arrive in the hospital in needs to be easy access and something that I can put on. So because, you know, I won't be able to lift my arms, I'm going to be living in these little robes for, oh, how cute, for a little while. Um, so I'm going to take a couple to the hospital and then we'll have some spares here at home because they will probably also get soiled. And here is one of the facas that I bought for after, you know, once I'm cleared. I bought two of these because, again, I heard that they will get soiled during with the drainage, drainage stuff. So here's one, two. I bought both of them from, I believe, the Amazon. And yeah, so here's those. I will be living in these for six weeks minimum is what the doctor told me. And that's it guys. Um, so I'm gonna pack obviously like the big, I'll be there for two days. Most people only spend a day, but I asked for an extra night just because I'm having so much work done to be able to have the assistance of the nurses. So I'm gonna take, you know, my phones, chargers, my cameras, so I can vlog everything. Um, maybe some notepads. I don't know. It almost feels like I'm. I was getting ready to when I would be getting my bags ready to go get birth. So anyway, it's getting so close. I'm definitely very anxious, very nervous. A lot going on at home with the kids. Um, I've explained to the kids, you know, kind of what's gonna go down, and that I won't be home for a couple days. They are emotional. They are anxious. And they're like, "Mommy, we're gonna miss you." And again, that is just the one thing that's really, really stressing me. So anyway. Um, I'm gonna finish packing my bag. I'm gonna have my last meal. <laughs> um, drink hell of water, and I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Okay, so this is um, as far as I can take you guys. Um, it's about 7 a.m. and they have confiscated my phones, but I set my GoPro. But now I gotta give it up because we're about to be wheeled back into the OR. So, wish me luck. I will vlog as soon as I come back to life. Baby has been hooked up. All right, it's about four hours post-op. Um, I obviously don't remember much. My pain level is about a nine right now. For some reason, like right below my breasts, like my rib cage is on fire. Um, I haven't gone out of bed yet. My legs are still pretty numb. Um, what else? I have all these drains. I did have my first like soft meal, jello, juice, and some tea. Um, and that's about it. I'm just like trying to pass time. I think it's hitting me how miserable I'm going to be feeling. I'm feeling like restless, but I don't want to move because I'm in pain. And it's hard to take like deep breaths. Um, 
anyway, he said everything went well. Um, so, yeah, that's my little update. Okay, so I am really hungry. Like, since the minute that I came out of, um, like, anesthesia, I was just starving. Like, I wanted to eat. But I had to make sure, they had to make sure I could hold down, you know, um, jello and liquid. But this shit looks really fresh. Like, let me show y'all what this looks like. Fresh veggies, fresh candito. And this is made by the hospital. Like, I must say, I'm pleasantly surprised. Okay, so we are about I don't even know how many hours post op. It is day one, day of surgery still. Um, Walter just came with the babies. I didn't record, I don't know why, se me fue la onda. He brought me oatmeal and shit in my laptop. It is very difficult to talk right now. I don't know why, but I'm really winded every, like I was trying to have conversations with him and it's hard to speak I, I lose my breath and I can't take deep breaths so anyway small day I I'm really hungry is all I can keep vlogging how hungry I am I had caldo de pollo and then Walter brought me some avena that I asked for and some fruit I got my starby cup though I really want to be drinking water out of a straw because not just because I'm being extra, but it's just easier to drink out of a straw right now than water bottles that they're giving me. Anyway, so it's gonna be a rough night. They just gave me some sleeping pills. Pain level is definitely a nine. Anytime I move, even breathing is hurting right now. They were pain. This is on fire. Okay, so I lied when I said that was my last update. For tonight, it's my first day. It's my first night after surgery, as you can see. It's like two in the morning. I just cannot sleep. I can't get comfortable. My rib cage is on fire. Like when I lean back a little bit in the bed, I, I get a little bit of relief for a few seconds. And then it's just back. So I've just been like moving my chair up and down, up and down. Not a lot, obviously, because I don't want to tear my incision. I've ate all the snacks that Walter brought me. So, if you're ever going to have the surgery done, bring hella snacks. I am so hungry. So hungry. I can't, like, stop eating. And, yeah, so. They did give me sleeping pills, like, three hours ago. And it didn't help. I'm so wide awake just kind of restless, and but I can't move. I've been watching movies, trying to edit it, but I just can't get comfortable. Okay, day one after surgery. It's been a really long night. I did not sleep at all, at all. And you'd be surprised at the reason why I couldn't sleep. It's not the pain from any incision or body part. It's the it's the pain from this fucking faja that is so tight. It's cutting into my skin. Like my ribs hurt. My rib my rib cage. And I kept asking like why does my rib cage hurt like this? And then I finally stuck my finger in there. Like you know, under the faja and I pulled it out a little bit and oh, oh instant relief. And so I called a nurse and I was like Miss Nurse, I can't breathe because this faca is on too high, too tight, and I can't sleep because I can't get comfortable. And she's like, well, we can't take it off. There's no way to loosen it. You know, and I understood. But now that I know the source of the pain, I don't know. Anyway, so I didn't sleep. I have not shut my eyes all night long. I've just been, like, watching movies on Netflix, making TikToks for you guys. Um... I did get up from my bed and walk about an hour ago and it wasn't as bad as I thought. I'm still very weak mentally, mentally. It's not that it pains, it's, 
painful. It's that I'm scared that it's gonna hurt. And then, like, as I got up and I took tiny steps, I'm like, oh, it's not too bad. I'm just scared that some certain movements will trigger a lot of pain, which they do. I, f I instantly felt the soreness in my abdomen the most out of everything. My butt didn't hurt. My, it's not my boobs. It's my abdomen and my ribs that are just on fire. So I have to take a shower today after breakfast. They will remove everything. I'm really nervous. And still can't take deep breaths because of the faca. Um, I feel more, more alive, like... Last night, I was definitely still doped up when I was recording. Today, I'm more like alert and aware, um, but I'm tired and I can't sleep. I just can't get comfortable. Anyway, that's my little update. It's like seven in the morning right now, uh, waiting on breakfast. After breakfast, I gotta get up and walk. And then after that, we're gonna head to the shower. Day two after surgery, I'm still in the hospital and I'm so glad that I stayed an extra night because holy hell, the pain last night was unimaginable. I wanted to cry, but crying also hurt. Um, I feel like I have a pretty high tolerance for pain, but I was not prepared. I've, I've never felt this type of pain in my life. Um, Last night, they were able to give me some morphine. They gave me a straight shot of it, like in my arm, not even through my IV, to get the pain under control because it was just too much. Y me desespero. I think part of the, the hard part has been being here alone. Um, Walter can't be here with the babies because the babies get, you know, enfadados and in general, like it stresses them to see me, especially when I'm in pain. I don't want them missing me in pain. So I've just been here by myself in the hospital for these last two nights. And it has been very difficult mentally as I'm experiencing the pain. Because I don't have like any a way to shift the focus or someone to talk to. Um, aside the physical difficulty and the pain, the mental part is really what's, what's been fucking with me. It's um, I know this sounds very like dramatic, but... Like I'm in solitary confinement in pain and it feels like torture. I know that's that's graphic, but that's how it feels. Um, so anyway, yesterday I was able to take a shower. Um, my catheter was removed, so I've been having to get up and go to the bathroom. So I've been keeping me mobile. The pain was very surreal last night. Um, it hits me in waves, kind of like when the when the meds start to wear off. That period between them applying new medicine into my IV and it finally like hitting me it takes a little bit and it feels like hours of agony for it to hit so last night I hadn't slept at all I didn't sleep day one or night one I didn't sleep throughout the day and then last night they gave me more sleeping pills but I was in so much pain that I couldn't sleep and so finally I just kept bugging them and I said I am in so much pain help me and she comes in and she's like okay we're gonna give you un piquetito you know and she she brought in a syringe i asked her what it was and she said that it was morphine and oh my gosh when i tell you that i felt instant relief when it went into my arm it was like throwing bucket a bucket of water over a fire in my inside my body it's the only way that i can explain it like my insides felt on fire and the minute they gave me the shot i was just Whew. relaxed. I finally slept. It's amazing what some sleep um, can do for you when you're recovering. So I slept all last night. I woke up this morning. I've been up and down like four times to this restroom. Um, so today is going to be discharge day. The doctor is supposed to come follow up with me and um, hopefully I have him give us a recap of everything that's been done where I'm at medically. Then I'm headed home. I'm really nervous to go home because I'm not going to have the nurses, um, where to leave though, well, my biggest fear is being in that much pain that I was last night and not having obviously access to morphine because they're not going to prescribe me morphine. Ugh. It's still kind of hard to breathe. Um, so I did see myself naked last night. 
because I showered. Uh, well, I saw the front, I didn't see the back. I saw my incisions. Ugh. I, it made me really woozy. Um, I'm excited to see some results. It's definitely too soon and I just told myself trust the process because it's not looking pretty right now. My body is definitely going through it. So um, I'll check back with you guys hopefully when the doctor comes in to give us a recap and then we are headed home.